Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Consuming Cinema, a show about making and pairing food and drinks from popular movies and TV shows. Today, to kick off this year's Halloween episodes, we are making Ecto Cooler with egg rolls from Ghostbusters. If you haven't seen Ghostbusters, it's a 1984 horror comedy directed by Ivan Reitman and written by two of the film's stars, Dan Aykroyd and the late great Harold Ramis. The film became a massive success and cultural icon that spawned a 1989 sequel, two animated TV series, theme park rides, video games, another sequel delayed till next year, and a 2016 reboot I promise not to mention again. The original Ghostbusters follows three recently unemployed parapsychologists, Drs. Ray Stance, Egon Spangler, and Peter Bankman, who, after their university grant is terminated by this douchey dean, start up a ghost hunting or busting business, eventually adding to their team with a receptionist named Janine, Ghostbusters, what do you want? As well as a fourth Ghostbuster named Winston. Ernie Hudson, who are you gonna call? The Ghostbusters go around New York catching a plethora of paranormal entities, from a gluttonous green ghoul named Slimer, to a Sumerian demon named Gozer, who takes the form of a 100-foot Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. But earlier in the movie, just before receiving their first big ghost call, the team dines on Chinese food, and Egon eats an egg roll. I'm gonna need to draw some petty cash. I should take her out to dinner, we don't want to lose her. Uh, this magnificent feast here represents the last of the petty cash. That's when Janine exclaims, We got one! Chinese food also plays a role in the reboot as the setting of the... Wait, sorry, promised I wouldn't go there. But what about this mysterious beverage, Ecto Cooler? You might be thinking, I know there's an Ecto One in the movie, but no mention of an Ecto Cooler. Well, Ecto Cooler was a fruit juice drink created by Hi-C in 1989 that was actually just a renamed version of a previous product called Citrus Cooler. While commonly misinterpreted as a cross-promotional product for the animated series The Real Ghostbusters, on account of the cartoon Slimer from the show being used on the packaging, the drink was actually created to promote the 1989 release of Ghostbusters 2. And while we do see some high C in Ghostbusters 2, Ecto Cooler doesn't actually appear in the movie. Bummer though it is, in fact, canonical, appearing in the background of the 2015 IDW comic, Ghostbusters Get Real. But before we can make our Ecto Cooler, we first have to make our egg rolls, which I'll do over there. But first, I wanted to mention that this is an adaptation of a recipe from my late grandpa, published in a 1984 Chicago Sun-Times article about tailgating. My grandpa's recipe starts with two mixes. The first is a pork mix, and the second is a cabbage mix. The pork mix starts in a medium pan, to which we'll add a tablespoon of neutral oil, as well as a half a yellow onion mixed with the whites of three green onions, all chopped, which we are going to stir and cook down until all these onions soften before adding a teaspoon of ginger, which we will grate directly into the onions, and then one carrot, peeled and julienned, as well as one rib of celery, finely chopped. Then we are going to stir this mix together, allowing these other veggies to soften a little bit while still retaining their texture. And after they cook down a little bit, transfer these veggies to a small bowl, which we'll set aside while we cook the rest of our pork mix, which starts with a little more oil in our pan, followed by a quarter pound of ground pork which we'll stir up and allow to brown. Then to this pork, we will add a teaspoon of mirin, or really any kind of wine for cooking, as well as a teaspoon of soy sauce, in addition to a teaspoon of brown sugar. And then while I mix this together, I'll also note that I added a dash of sesame oil, which I didn't actually get a good shot of. Then we are going to add back in that veggie mix and incorporate everything together before adding a half a teaspoon of pepper and a pinch of salt, which we will mix in before then adding a teaspoon of cornstarch, then mix that all together before transferring the pork mixture to a large bowl, which we'll cover and then let sit in the fridge to cool for at least 30 minutes. Now we're gonna make our cabbage mix, which starts with a half a head of cabbage which I shredded and then let sit in a paper towel lined bowl with two teaspoons of salt for an hour to extract excess water and keep the cabbage crispy. So into the wok goes another tablespoon of neutral oil, followed by our shredded and salted cabbage. And then we're gonna stir this cabbage up and allow it to soften and crisp up just slightly until it becomes a vibrant green but does not become wilted at which point we'll transfer the cabbage to a medium bowl. And then to this bowl, we will add a tablespoon of flour, which we'll then mix into the cabbage, after which we'll cover this cabbage mix and allow it to cool for at least 30 minutes as well. Before we finish our egg rolls, we're first gonna make what I'm calling our Ecto Mix, which is a fruit juice blend I based off the actual ingredients of Ecto Cooler. Our Ecto Mix includes a bevy of different fruits, including six tangerines, or in my case, clementines, as well as two navel oranges, in addition to one lemon, and one lime, which we'll juice into a container. And then into a separate container, we'll strain this mix, 
If you're wondering why this extra step, well, first off, it'll save you a lot of extra effort straining pulp later, and second off, back off, man. I'm a scientist. Now we will refrigerate our ecto mix until we're ready to make our cocktail. Now it's time to roll our egg rolls. So we'll grab our pork mix and to it we will add three large shrimps which we will peel, devein, and chop into a mash. Then we're gonna add back in our cabbage mixture, followed by a cup of bean sprouts, roughly chopped, as well as a teaspoon of Chinese five spice. The next thing we're gonna add is not a typical ingredient in egg rolls, a tablespoon of peanut butter. And while to some this may sound like dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Peanut butter is often an ingredient found in egg rolls from Chicago, where my grandpa's recipe was published. Know who else was from Chicago? The man eating the egg roll in the film himself, Mr. Harold Ramis, and Bill Murray too, of course. So into our mix goes the tablespoon of peanut butter, and then we're going to incorporate everything together, but as I did, I forgot one more important raw ingredient, the greens of our earlier scallions. And once you mix this all together, it's time to form our egg rolls. So set our mix to the side and grab a plate, as well as one egg, beaten, which we'll use to seal the egg rolls, in addition to a parchment-lined baking sheet on which we'll set our finished egg rolls, as well as a package of egg roll wrappers one of which we'll set down onto our plate. Then we're going to use a quarter cup measurement to scoop out some filling and place it in the area of the pitcher's mound using my grandpa's old baseball analogy. Now we're going to form this mix into a shaga shape, leaving rooms at the ends, or the bases so to speak. And then to continue this baseball analogy, we are going to use our egg sealer and brush a bit of egg from the base path from third to second and then from second base to first. Then we're going to fold the bottom flap over our pitcher's mound and tighten the wrapper around the cigar shape. Next, grab the side flaps near first and third base and fold them into the center. Then simply roll the egg roll up as tightly as possible, allowing the egg to seal the wrapper shut until you have a nice perfect egg roll. Then repeat this process with the rest of the egg roll wrappers, keeping in mind my grandpa's helpful baseball analogy. The cigar shaped pitcher's mound, the egg base paths from third to second, and then from second to first. You're gonna wanna make these egg rolls in batches and fry them as soon as possible after rolling them. So I'm gonna turn the rest of the egg roll making duties over to my lovely fiance Bailey while I go over to the stove to preheat the oil for frying. So fill enough oil inside of a Dutch oven or wok and heat the oil to between 355 and 360 degrees. And as I do, we can see that Bailey is over handling the rest of the egg rolling masterfully. And once our oil is brought up to temperature, we'll place in our first batch of egg rolls into the hot oil to fry. And we're simply gonna fry these bad boys until they're an even golden brown on all sides. You may have to flip some and submerge them with tongs so that they brown evenly while frying. And once they're finished, we're going to place them on a wire rack lined baking sheet and fry up our subsequent batches. I found that the range between 355 and 365 degrees works best for frying as when the oil gets above 365, the egg roll crusts can tend to become bubbly. So we're gonna finish frying the rest of our egg rolls, and once they're done, we're gonna let these cool on the rack while we finish up our cocktail. So what do you say, you want some ecto cooler? Do I? Yes, have some. Yes, have some. Okay, then it starts in a small shaker tin, to which we'll add two ounces of vodka. I'm using a brand called Crystal Head, which is actually a company co-founded by none other than Dan Aykroyd. You get it. You see what's going on here. So in goes two ounces of vodka using these super dope shot glasses that came with the bottle, which I actually have another plan for later. Then we're gonna add two ounces of our ecto mix, as well as one ounce of simple syrup. Now we're gonna set this tin aside for a moment while we plate our egg rolls. So first, set down a plate, as well as one of these neat little takeout boxes I found on Amazon, which I'll put a link for below. Then we're gonna fill that takeout box with a few of our egg rolls, as well as one for the plate. Now I'm going to use these shot glasses for dipping sauces, the first of which is a Chinese hot mustard, which we'll mix according to the instructions on the side. Then we're going to make a simple little blend of hot chili oil with some sweet and sour sauce. Then mix this together, and now it's time to finish our ecto cooler. So into our small tin we'll add a quarter ounce of blue curacao, then we'll add some ice to our big tin, and lock in our small tin, and then give our ecto cooler a good shake. Then into this cool little vintage Ghostbuster glass I found on eBay, we'll strain our ecto cooler, revealing its spectacular green color. Now all that's left to do is cut into our egg roll and do a little rearranging. And at long last, your ecto cooler with egg rolls is finally done. Now there's nothing left to do but to taste it. So we'll start with one of our egg rolls in a little bit of that hot mustard, as well as a bite with our sweet chili dip for scientific purposes. And I gotta say, with all credit to my grandpa, this really is a phenomenal egg roll recipe. That bit of peanut butter adds a really nice depth of flavor that you don't get in your typical egg roll. But how do these egg rolls pair with Ecto Cooler? Well, right off the bat, that sip of Ecto Cooler was truly a sip of pure nostalgia. Not only that, but it actually goes perfectly with these egg rolls. 
Both of these concoctions feel both very familiar as well as incredibly comforting, and together they make for what is quite possibly my favorite duo in the brief history of this show. So, with all that said, it goes without saying that this pairing is most certainly worthy of two big thumbs up. If you like the channel, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Tell us what you'd like to see. Leave any video suggestions in the comments below. Full recipes can be found in the link in the video description. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Consuming Cinema. And don't forget to join us next week when we make a pairing from Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Thank you for watching.